Hello YouTube, Breathfire here. Um, I just want to talk about some of my technical projects I've done in this video. And you will be watching today my GE Color Effects Arduino project. So, first I'm going to talk a little bit about my project, and then uh, pretty much about the technical specs, and then tell you about some of the modifications I've done to this project, because I know a lot of people have done these in the past. But anyway... Here are my lights around my room, and typical of these GE color effects projects, they're all based on the code of Deep Dark, and he came up with the, uh, he, he reverse engineered the bus data, the bus protocol. Let's see. Um, using his code, I pretty much did a bunch of logical backends to make mode making very easy. You can see I have a interesting mode here. And my Arduino has about 17 modes on 17 generic modes. Uh, it has some ambient modes for late night. It has some sound reactive modes when you hook up a microphone. Um, and it has some test modes which are mostly just fun modes. And they are controlled with this little multi-dip switch. This thing is actually pretty buggy, though. Uh, some of the pins aren't the best here. So this first, you can see the first pin is over, which basically makes it put on generic mode. And the more pins you have over, uh, it will pull the next pattern from like any of these lists. The first one corresponds to generic. Second is ambient. Third is sound reactive. Uh, fourth is just like test or fun mode. There's a little button up here to preempt whatever uh, pattern it's on. Not all patterns are preemptible, but uh, if you want to change them, you can hit this button. So, um, pretty much, it's standard GE color effects. There is one line coming out for data, one line for 5 volts, one line for ground. It's run off the original power supply. I just kind of spliced it into my project here. Um, and ran DCC and ground into my Arduino. Um, and then pretty much all the uh, all the dip switch stuff I did myself. It's pretty simple wiring. Um, and yeah, turned out pretty nice. I did all the back end work constructing the, yeah, like I said, the logic to easily uh, create patterns. And so now uh, I'm going to show you some cool patterns here. I'm going to switch this over here. And this over here. So what? So I don't know if you saw it, but it showed a pattern of lights. And now it is randomizing that pattern. And this mode is going to be sorting the lights back to the original. This is the merge sort, it looks like. So it actually shows you how it divides up the lights via recursion here and you'll see merging merges that those two divides that up merges mer divides that merges merges those three merges those big sets merges this huge set and pretty much continues that via standard merge sort um, for these test modes I also have a a bubble sort for fun, and I have a mode that basically displays a binary counter where each one of the lights represents a binary digit. So that's pretty much all of that, and so <clears throat> now I want to talk about some additions I've made to this project that I haven't seen anywhere else, but uh, actually I don't have any of these additions currently working. So the first one I did was uh, I took out the RF module from the original board. I've never seen anyone actually work with this, and probably for a good reason. It was a pain in the ass. But um, I, I actually did have this working before. Essentially, this RF module will continuously spit out data. And when you press the controller that came with the original set, uh, it spits out different data. Um, and it was I tried originally parsing through this data with my Arduino, but it was really hard to do. So I actually used an, an, another Arduino, it was a Pro Mini, to continuously read the data and uh, I, was, I was actually able to see button presses that way. 
And it's funny because the Arduino actually can't pull, the, can't even the, the even the interrupts, interrupts or pulling. You can't really pull the wires fast enough to 100% know for certain uh, whether or not um, you, you're you're actually receiving a button press or not. So it's pretty buggy. But I was able to receive button presses. Sometimes they'd misfire and think it one was pressed even when one wasn't. But generally it worked. I scrapped it though because it needed a secondary Arduino Pro Mini to keep parsing um, to keep parsing all the data continuously. And uh, yeah, I I'm using it in another project right now. So this is another mode. I think this one's going to do a bubble sort. Um, the second thing that I did was I used this microphone to make some sound sensitive modes. Unfortunately, when I moved out of college, my college room and came back here, it bricked this board. This is a little electric electret microphone I got from Sparkfun. And Sparkfun actually had some pretty bad reviews on these and uh no wonder because you know people said they broke really easily and sure enough, mine was working but uh it broke. So I still have the sound reactive modes, but there's no input into my um Arduino, which is unfortunate because uh I, I can't show you them. But essentially, some of the modes I had were like um, I had one. I had one where I did uh, I did an FFT on the sound data, and every single uh, light starting from low frequencies here, and then continue, every single light was higher and higher frequencies. So I actually had a I, I did a pro, I downloaded a program to sweep my speakers for different frequencies, and it, the lights would light up in unison during the sweep. It was pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, you can see, you can see bubble sort going on here. I think blues, blues must be at this end. Anyway, uh, that's my project. I hope you enjoyed it, YouTube. Um, and I hope, uh, to see some people doing these cool projects. These are always really fun. If anyone has any questions, specifically if you guys want to know more about how I use this, because I haven't seen anyone else do that, uh, let me know and maybe I'll post some source. That's it.